My name is Melissa Grisolfi. I am an associate professor in mathematics education here at Vanderbilt and also in a program called Learning Sciences and Learning Environmental Design. What we're interested in is when kids are actually engaged in the physical activity of that design, what mathematical ideas rise up. We're not trying to teach them things about mathematics, we're trying to highlight the, their mathematical thinking that helps them design the things that they're trying to do better. So for example, knitting, because you're routinely trying to create an object that's not just flat or stackable, you're trying to create something that's going to fit a person or an object, you start to think about ideas such as ratio or proportion. You would think about slope depending on the way you're going to try to change a pattern um, or change colors within a pattern. And you guys are going to see me make a scarf. For example, if you want something to fit a certain way, um, especially in knitting, if you don't try to think about the ratio between how many stitches you're knitting and an, and an inch, basically, you're not going to be very good at developing a pattern that's actually going to fit. So the mathematical idea arises out of the design challenge. With younger kids, of course, just counting and pattern. But then we've worked with kids up to um, rising ninth graders. And those kids, are as they're starting to do more complex things, are thinking about um, multiples and factors and ratio and proportion as you try to, if you're trying to make something bigger or smaller, you're trying to think about change over like a particular space, right? So that you can't, when you're adding stitches, you wouldn't just add six stitches all at once in the middle, your garment would look really weird. So you have to distribute those evenly across your row. So thinking about that and thinking about growing over time is a kind of proportional reasoning task. I just didn't realize the potential flexibility of knitting in terms of how it could support kids' mathematical thinking you know, across really the developmental lifespan. We've also learned that kids are surprisingly good at knitting. On average, it takes kids about three hours to learn to knit in such a way that they could like, you know, not that they wouldn't ever make mistakes, we all continue to make mistakes, but they can sort of work independently and start to work towards something that they want to make themselves. So we're trying to design learning environments where we stop simply telling kids what to do and instead create opportunities for them to engage with ideas where the particular mathematical content that they need to learn about emerges through their activity.